What I'm going to share with you over the next few minutes is something that when I realized it, it changed my life and my whole perspective about my relationship with God. Now, as Christians, we know that our sins have separated us from God. And because of that, Jesus came and was the ultimate and final sacrifice so that through him, we could be reconciled back to God. While all of that is true, I feel like we can miss out on the very heart of God behind it all. So I want us to look at not just the good news of the gospel and how it saved us from our sins, but let's consider one of the main reasons that God created us humans in the first place. Now, God created all humanity in his magnificent image. Every person who has ever been born and who ever will be born bears the imago Dei, the image of God. And God made us to be like him in his image for a specific reason. Now in Genesis, the three in one God, Father, Son, and Spirit said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Now, why would God create a race of beings that are in his likeness? I mean, he could have made humans to be wildly different with very little in common than himself. Uh, God could have made dogs, cats, or even horses the dominant creature. Why somebody like him? My answer would be this, because he wanted a creature that he could be in relationship with. Beings who have uh, similar emotions, feelings, and thought patterns as him. So, with relationship in mind, here is one of the main reasons I believe we humans were created. The reason? The Father wanted a bride for his son Jesus. Now think back to the garden. Adam looked around and he didn't find anyone compatible to be in relationship with. So God created woman, someone made in Adam's very image. Likewise, God knew that there was no one suitable for his son Jesus. So he created creatures in his own likeness, humans, to be a bride so that we could be in perfect relationship with him. Now God was not incomplete or lacking anything or anyone. You know, he would have been just fine without us, but God is love. And in my opinion, he apparently wanted someone to share that love with. So as we read the whole Bible, we see how everything points to Jesus as our Messiah and Savior, but we fail to see that our relationship with Jesus isn't just about being forgiven. The real overarching theme, in my opinion, is about a father preparing an eternal bride for his son. Over and over in both the Old and the New Testaments, we see marriage being used as an analogy for the relationship between God's people and God himself. I love Matthew 22, 1 through 2. Jesus himself says, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. That is so huge. Let me say that again. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. And in Matthew 25, Jesus again gives us a parable about the kingdom of heaven being like virgins waiting for the bridegroom. You know, Revelation describes the wedding that will take place in eternity when his wife, as the Bible calls us, will consummate our relationship with the living God. Revelation 19, 6 through 9 says, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Now, in the Old Testament, when Israel would turn their hearts away from God and turn to false gods and worthless idols, God referred to it as adultery towards God. And there are many other verses that convey this message, both in the Old and in the New Testaments. You know, one thing I think that's happened is the enemy of our souls has done a really good job at what I call identity theft. He has convinced us that God just sort of tolerates us and, you know, feels obligated out of duty to forgive our sins. The truth is, we have been created with a much higher purpose than we realize, and that is to be a part of the beloved bride of Christ. And you know, once we get that into our heads and our hearts, I don't see how we could ever live the same way again. I say part of the bride of Christ because the bride is the whole church body as one. Everyone who is united in Christ makes up the one body, the one bride. But even though we are individual parts of a whole, we all share the beautiful identity as his bride. 
And that invitation to be a part of this beautiful bride is open to anyone who puts their faith in God through Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 11.2 says, For I feel a divine jealousy for you, since I betroth you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. You see that? We are all one bride presented to one husband. God is crazy about us, and he does all things to purify us, cleanse us, and make us ready so that we will not need to be ashamed at the coming of Christ our bridegroom. Jesus is coming for a spotless bride, but that doesn't mean that we need to be perfect because obviously we never could be. But it means he's coming for those who by obedience and humility have trained themselves to be Christ-like. So when we are like him as God originally intended, we are living our greatest purpose and will have our greatest fulfillment. So, as believers, we are now officially engaged. Think about what it was like when you date someone or get engaged. How much you fawn over the other person. You just want to be with them and spend time with them. You talk about them to everyone you know. And you're just madly, passionately, head over heels in love with them. As Christians, we have become sons and daughters of God by a marriage covenant to Jesus. We have accepted the great proposal, as I call it, and begun an engagement that will last until the relationship is officially consummated at the great wedding feast in eternity. And just as you show your love to your significant other here on earth by uh, what you do more than just what you say, we show our love to God by our faithfulness to him and his word. And this is super important, you know, just as there, um, or just as it takes an effort to make an earthly marriage grow and prosper, the same is true with our relationship with God. If you neglected your spouse, you know, you never spent time with them, you never talked to them, and you were just kind of lackadaisical about what they wanted, the marriage would be constantly miserable, and the temptation would be there to start looking elsewhere to find happiness and fulfillment. Sadly, that's exactly what uh, happens to a lot of people when they neglect their faith. They don't find the fulfillment that's available to them, and so they look elsewhere at the expense of their own peace and their own well-being. Lastly, since the Bible says that we are the bride of Christ and we are one body, it is vitally important to have unity in the body of Christ. You know, we are all one body and that one body is the bride. So one day, we as the one bride will all be united around a great marriage supper. People from all tribes, nations, and races being joined together as the bride of Christ. So let's strive for unity in the body of Christ knowing that we are all one in him.